five, six, solitary. It's terrifying. Like, I feel like an idiot dressed like this, but it's terrifying. Wait, wait, wait. Don't click out just yet. This is, in fact, the right video. This ridiculous costume that you see, well, we'll get to that a little bit later on in the show. But right now, we have some real serious shit to attend to, because there appears to be a spirit all alone with me inside of solitary confinement, and it's calling me out directly. Spirits, you're back. Oh, just said you're back. Oh, why are you chills? Yeah, my name's Chad. Uh, I've been here before. It just said my last name. You're recording, right? Yeah. Oh, there was definitely a man talking out here. We are a group of investigators. And I didn't even turn it on, skeptics. FYI, and it's on again. In the middle of nowhere. And one that's a bit empathic. I think that I'm too empathic, that the room was upset that we were ghost hunting. Join us on our adventures of diagnosing the mysteries of the paranormal. Our trip from Salt Lake to Boise up to the Idaho State Penitentiary is one that was a year in the making. See, prior to my profession as a professional ghost hunter, I was a medical director and had to travel around the U.S., and one of those places included Boise, where I just so happened to run into the Idaho State Penitentiary. During one of my visits up to Boise, I found myself on the grounds of the Idaho State Penitentiary and happened to do a little daytime paranormal investigation. Immediately, I got in contact with the Historical Society, and after a year of planning, we finally got ourselves a reservation. Now, for those of you who follow along the channel and have seen our past couple of episodes, you know that those got quite dark and a little bit scary. So I'm going to give you the next two minutes of something that's a little bit smoother until we get right back into it. Arguably the best component of these paranormal investigations are the times that we get to spend together in planning out trips along the road. So for this particular investigation, we found ourselves in a VRBO that overlooked the entire Boise Valley and was located just a mile away from the penitentiary. Amazing trails right in our own backyard that led up on the East Idaho Bench. If you're in the area, I definitely recommend checking them out as they end right at the front doorstep of the penitentiary. The team also explored various restaurants, sampling fine foods and delicious cocktails along the way. <laughs> His little pinky's out. <laughs> Here you can even see Sarah demonstrating the way to pour the perfect mimosa. Nope, that's too much, that's too much. We gotta bring it back, bring it back. The only downside to this is that we don't get to bring our dogs with us. But don't you worry, they're safe at home with DGH investigator Bob, who's taking good care of them until he joins us on the next investigation. Big investigation tonight with new member, Nicole. Nicole, say hello. Hi. Just had some breakfast. Nicole, what do you think about your first investigation tonight? What are you expecting? Some haunts. <laughs> the mouth-watering meals and cocktails, in addition to the late night card games, certainly make for a great time. And that's even before the investigation starts. <laughs> Jason, what are you expecting out of our investigation at the Idaho State Penitentiary? A non-believer becomes a believer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's about enough stalling. Let's get into it. The old Idaho Penitentiary opened its doors in 1872 on the east bench of Boise, located in the time what was known as the Territory of Idaho. Beginning as a single cell house, the penitentiary grew to a complex of several buildings surrounded by a 17-foot-high sandstone wall and the ominous overlooking Boise Mountains. Closing its doors in 1973, the 100-year-old property grew to five cell houses, a food hall, chapel, and solitary confinement. 13,000 people here over the course of the 101 years that it was open, but it was a 600, um, was a, about the highest capacity that we had. And that's keeping in mind that there were times when the site was very overcrowded. During its operation, 129 recorded deaths occurred, including 10 executions, suicides, murders, and various escaped attempts that also ended in death. At least three separate serious riots occurred over the living conditions in the prison, including one that sparked fire and destruction to the dining hall and chapel. The grounds currently consist of numerous buildings and a rose garden. 
the Rose Garden served as the initial location of death row for inmates. And in the early years, the penitentiary inmates in the original cell house could actually watch the gallows being built and view the executions as they happened. This location currently is famous in the paranormal world for an investigation conducted by Ghost Adventures and Zachary Royd Bagans. Cell House 4 was built in 1952 and was the largest and most modern cell house at the penitentiary. It's in Cell House 4 and Cell House 5 where Destination Fear famously heard phantom sounds during their investigation. All right, Jason and Chad here. We're starting off. This is night one of our investigation inside of cell block four. Now we have access to the first floor here. Um, we have cells flying from one down to eight, nine, ten. And we're going to see, we're going to try and reach out to most of the cell blocks here and see what we can capture. For this part of the investigation, we lay out numerous pieces of equipment just outside of jail cells to see if we can get any inmates to interact with us. As we do so, we also have a spirit box pulled up for any communication. But before any of these devices can be activated, we get some truly shocking news. Hey, Sarah, I can hear you. Hey, we're going to head out, if that's OK. All right, so the girls are out. Jason, how far are we into this investigation? <laughs> 20 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes and the girls are done. So uh, you want to know how scary this place is? That's how scary it is. Where, where do you think the girls are really going? I think there's wine back at the house, so... <laughs> Dude, this place is scarier, the wine is not hmm. scary. We'll let the viewers decide. <laughs> it's gotta be... Families gather. It's gotta be outside, right? Half expected to see someone. Hello? We we have this entire place rented. That could be an engine. Okay, what's just we need the second walkie and I'll go out there. You stay in here. When you hear it, you let me know. See, there it is again. We need the walkies, and I'll go outside. We'll see if I can hear it outside. I'll go back and get it. It's in the main house. Okay. Okay. Do you want to go down on that far end and stay there, and I'll go outside, and as soon as you hear it, let me know. Not for the last probably two minutes, but as soon as you walked out, it was pretty active. I'm, I'm down to the far end by the rim pod. I'm going to walk back by the entrance. Okay, sounds good. I'll stay out here. Let's go back inside. And we'll try and split Jason and I up on opposite ends of the jail and see what we can hear. Yeah. Oh, I just heard it. I just heard it. I just heard it. Did you hear anything else? Yeah, yeah, I did. I'm hearing something. I don't know where it's coming from, though. Hang on. There's something rattling out here. It's a part of the building. Let me see if I can zero in on it. Yeah, I just heard it again. It's... It's one of the windows. One, two, third part right up there. There's a flap. I can see it moving. 
So they covered up the window with a metal plate. Through this investigation and course of debunking over the next 10 minutes, we are able to fully debunk this sound. Now, we're fortunate that we were doing this part of the investigation during the day. If this was at night and we were locked alone inside with the lights off in a creepy environment, this would have an entirely different feel. So we want to urge everyone, not only on their own investigations, but also the content that they are viewing, to take everything with a grain of salt and always remember to look for something that could possibly explain what you are seeing and hearing, as opposed to jumping to the conclusion that it is in fact paranormal. Scientific method. So for now, uh, fortunately, probably, maybe unfortunately, uh, shirt stays on, I will not be fighting any demons yet. Not yet, Jason, but the night is young. That's right. Also on the grounds is solitary confinement, which consists of two sections. The first, built in the early 1920s, was known as the cooler. Although built for solitary confinement, each cell contained four to six men. The second section, known as Siberia, was built in 1926 and housed 12 three by eight foot cells with one inmate per cell and minimal sunlight or exposure to the outside world. In the solitary confinement building and feel something um, whether it's you know a ha something that feels like a hand or or you know a strange gust of wind whatever whatever it is there's actually well i'm not gonna lie to you i've definitely been dreading this particular portion of the investigation for about the last five months since it happened and to be honest i was really hoping that we didn't catch anything paranormal so i could simply leave this out but it does warrant some explanation so here it goes jason is a detroit lions football fan i'm a denver broncos fan now, I also have a friend named Ricky. Here he is. He's an attorney, and it should be noted that all attorneys should not be trusted, especially by doctors. Now, last year, the Denver Broncos played the Detroit Lions in Detroit, and I couldn't help myself, and so I made a wager with Jason. The wager is that the fan of the losing team had to go do an investigation by themselves in solitary confinement. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, that's where Ricky enters the picture, because you see, Ricky couldn't let it just simply set as that. He said that not only did the loser had to sit in solitary confinement, but that they should also have to dress up in costume. And me, being a sucker for a bet, especially when it comes to Jason, I couldn't help myself. I ended up losing the bet. These two idiots decided that I should dress up as King Triton in solitary confinement, because that makes sense. And so here we are. All make sense? Great. So let's get on with it. Here's our investigation in solitary confinement. set up here in, in solitary. I feel like an idiot. Behind me I got the spirit box. I've got the rim pod. I've got the, the trip wire. We've got what six rooms? One, two, three, four, five, six, solitary. Spirits? Oh, just take your back. Yeah, my name is Chad. Uh, I've been here before. just said hi before that it just said my last name how does it how does it know all right well you want to you decided that you want to throw a haymaker from the start? Freeze. Freeze? Nah, you don't get to dictate this. You can terrify me. You may know things 
in whatever realm you're in. But I, you don't dictate how this goes. You don't have that control. This activity on the spirit box happened almost immediately upon starting the investigation in solitary confinement. Now, shortly after this, I find myself getting quite irritated with the spirits. I think I can chalk this up to completely being blown off guard that not only did it call out my first name twice, but also said my last name to me. It was definitely my very first Roy Bagan's moment of getting angry at spirits that lasted just a few minutes and then seemed to go away. Not entirely certain what to make of that, but it was certainly out of character for me. After this, with the exception of a few words that came through on the spirit box, nothing else happened for the remaining 30 minutes of my time in solitary confinement. No activations of the tripwire, the REM pod didn't go off, and so I'm not entirely certain what to make of what we heard out of the ghost tube spirit box. For us at Dr. Ghost Hunters listening to the footage, it certainly seems as though it's calling out my first and last name. What do you think it says? Certainly let us know in the comments below. I, most of my experiences come from the Maximum Security Building, Five okay. House. That's where the gallows, the hospital are. Um, designed by an inmate. Um, and then the area with the wall to keep them further separated. Sailhouse 5 was built in 1954 and was a maximum security where the most unruly and violent offenders stayed. This building also served as a permanent place of solitary confinement. It included a built-in gallows and death row. There's one day where I was locking up the site at the end of the night and we start with the drop room door which is the back door where the uh, um, gallows is, right? Okay. And I was going up the stairs and it just felt super occupied, almost like people were running past you back and forth. Okay. And kind of had to just, you know, stop and, and get your grip, right? And then I also heard people upstairs that I thought I was gonna have to tell that we were closing and I got up there and there was no one up there. Okay. And that's in the death row area in the gallows. The most famous death that occurred on the grounds was that of Idaho's Jack the Ripper, Raymond Snowden. Raymond Snowden was imprisoned in 1956 for the murder of Cora Dean. According to reports, on September 22, 1956, Snowden met Dean at a local bar. After she refused his sexual advances outside of the bar, Snowden pulled out a penknife which he used to slash Dean's throat, then mutilated her body by stabbing her at least 29 more times. Her body was then hidden and later discovered, and Snowden was arrested and eventually pled guilty and was sentenced to death. The crime was so brutal that authorities described Snowden as a sex psychopath. But Snowden met his fate in the new gallows of cell house 5 of Idaho State Penitentiary. Rumors state that Snowden's execution was purposefully botched as the rope failed to break his neck as intended. Interestingly, the gallows have a viewing deck and several people were there to actually view his execution. The rope failure led to a 15 minute window from the time of hanging until he was pronounced dead. Now due to that botched execution, it is believed that Snowden is still one of the many spirits that still haunt the halls of the cell houses located inside the Idaho State Penitentiary. We are in maximum security in number five. This is the jail cell of the infamous Raymond Snowden. So we're gonna try something different. So I'm gonna put on some headphones. I've got a little, like you could call a radio here. You can talk into that and I'll be able to hear it. Now I'll have headphones on so I can't hear what Chad or Jamie or Nicole are saying. During the first 10 minutes of the S-Day session, I asked questions to Jason, but without many responses, and the ones that were there were rather nonsensical. But once I stop asking questions and Nicole steps in, the responses from Jason change instantly. Specifically, we want to try and talk to Raymond Snowden. Would you rather a woman talk to you? It, 
Is that an answer? <laughs> wow. Do you want? What do I want? I said, do you want? Yeah. Do you, you want, want a woman to, to talk to them? This is different. In your cell? With a woman? I can change. Oh, Ravenstone killed a woman. That's the reason he was here. Do you think you have changed? Unfortunately, just as we've seen with plenty of other investigations, as quickly as the activity turns on, it seems to turn off, and the answers again become sparse and nonsensical. The K2 device that is sitting on the jail cell seems to be playing a bit of cat and mouse game with me. I can't tell you for certain that it wasn't related to my recording device setting it off as we were live streaming this on YouTube, but it was odd. You've been in here in the dark? See, every time I turn away, it goes off. I'm going to turn off the light. In this next clip inside of the completely dark jail cell in front of Raymond Snowden, you'll see the tripwire along with a K2 device on the right side of the screen and a K2 device on the left side of the screen. Nicole is situated on the far left side of the screen. You'll be able to see her silhouette. Pay attention to what happens to Nicole immediately after the K2 on the left side of the screen goes off. Wow. Lit up the room. Did you just lose your balance? Well, I... Yes, I guess. Yep. Or, or what? I don't know. <laughs> so you just fell backwards. I did, right on me, yes. As that thing lit up to red. Boise. Yeah, we're here. Animal. You're an animal? See if anything pops up on a bunch of foods. A lot. Extra clean. I like an extra clean man. <laughs> That's actually true. Did you just lose your balance? Wow. You lit up the room. Did you just lose your balance? you just saw the clip for the first time uh -huh. tell me what you remember inside of that cell block i remember standing flat on my feet um forward um kind of crouched down with my hands on my knees um to look at all the equipment and all the things going on and you can even see in the clip that like i'm 
forward facing yeah. and then just almost being pushed pulled back and that's the first time i fall a lot and that's the first time i've ever fell in like fallen backwards yeah and uh it was so aggressive it was an unusual experience and there's so many things about this clip that i think make it unique and first of all is how quickly you yeah. we'll, we'll call it fall back mm -hmm. but it doesn't look to me like you fell either it's not a natural slow move back yeah. it fortunately we can see the silhouette of your head it looks like you're pulled backwards yeah so question with that do you remember feeling anything do you feel as though someone pushed you or pulled you i don't remember anything like that to be honest i do just know if I'm looking forward and I'm forward of to fall back and to not have my arms fly up or anything to hmm. essentially catch myself. Um, it just, I think it was just really odd. Definitely caught me off guard, but I also had a little bit of embarrassment of not wanting like to call attention to it like I normally would with a fall. Right. And, uh, but I, like I said, I've never fallen backwards. Okay. So another anomaly in that sense as well did you think it was a paranormal event when it occurred i mean when i saw the footage and saw the lights changing right as it happened it definitely makes me think but i can't tell you i don't know yeah it was unusual and since it was a first experience and i i had just asked a question and it was almost being like stop you know right like get out of here <laughs> well especially where it was yeah. too, in front of snowden cell with someone who was accused and convicted of being yeah. aggressive towards women yeah it, that was it that adds was more context yeah. in retrospect especially with how many lights were on and just as they changed color yeah like i said i was leaning forward and that was the it's craziest still bizarre. part um with it being your first experience are you gonna come back and do it again absolutely yeah that's what i like to do <laughs> All right, everyone, that's going to do it from the Idaho State Penitentiary. If you liked the video, please take a second to give us a like and a subscription. It certainly means a lot and helps our channel grow. If you end up taking a trip to the Idaho State Penitentiary simply to visit the beautiful grounds or for a paranormal investigation, please let them know that Dr. Ghost Hunter sent you. The staff up there is tremendous. I can't say enough good things about them. They were there for us every step of the way if we needed them and also gave us the flexibility to investigate on our own. We will forever be grateful. As we wrap up, I hope that you enjoy some of these photos from our trip. Again, we love the paranormal investigation, but the good times that we have behind the scenes are really what make this fun. How much asbestos and lead do you think is in here? <laughs> mm, all of it. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Let us know what you thought about the various paranormal clips throughout the video, including Nicole's fall backwards. It certainly had us scratching our heads. Look forward to reading all the comments below. And until next time, happy hunting. Stop Hi. Yeah, no, no, we're keeping it in. We're keeping it in. We're keeping, we're keeping it in. We're keeping it in. We're keeping it in. We were trying to be funny. It was more creepy. Anyway, Chad and Jason, Sarah, Annie, and Jamie, we wanted to stop and say thank you so much for contributing to our Kickstarter. It was so generous. And honestly, your guys' support means the absolute world to us. Heck yeah. Thank you so much for allowing us to continue on this road trip and to keep doing what we love. Thank you guys so much. Yes, thank you. I hope you've been enjoying the new videos. We've got much longer videos now that we're on YouTube. We have full creative control. High five, Tana, for that. Nice. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your contribution. We love you. <laughs> oh, man. These videos have been crazy. It's been so nice to do it. We've already shot three entire road trips. Guys, can you back me up on this? Uh, yeah, you right road trips We shot three, right. yes. We, we, did three. we did three. Some of them have come out, but yep. not all of not them. Not all of them Right out. now, we are working on our first international road trip. That's right, all because of people like you. So thank you so much for allowing us to continue this dream. Yeah! Yeah, yeah. 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 thank you. Go, thank Paula! You. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry your video started off so weird. Bye. And ended pretty Whatever. weird too. Yeah.
Should we end it right now? <laughs>